What's going on ladies and gentlemen and welcome to another video. Now we're going to be covering task four and task six so please take out your notebooks and have your writing utensil in hand so that you can take some really good notes. Now copy the note taking diagram that's on the board it's in red marker so the star symbol the little box and number one and two. Now that's the reading passage that we're going to be covering today. The topic is process explanation. Now let's look at the first sentence. Telling a person how to do some kind of action is referred to as process explanation. Thank you very much. So process explanation, process explanation is referred to as telling a person how to do some kind of action. There's your definition. We don't need the reading passage anymore. Now, since we have a definition with no grammar mistakes and no misinterpretations, we are good to go. Now let's listen to the lecture. Listen to a lecture about the same topic and take notes. We all have things we don't comprehend or know how to do. In these cases, we require explanations to learn the steps involved in doing them. When a person provides that explanation, he can do so in a couple of different ways. For example, I bought a cell phone the other day. I'm somewhat uh, technologically challenged, so I had no clue as to how to use it. I could make and receive calls, but that was about it. I wanted to save some numbers on my telephone so that I wouldn't have to remember them, but I didn't know what to do. One of my friends then showed me exactly how to do it. He took me through it step by step and made sure that I could do it by myself before he took off. Later that night, I was watching an educational channel on television. There was a program about cell phone technology and how it's improving our lives. That show imparted a whole lot of knowledge about cell phones. However, by the end of the program, I still had no idea how to operate my phone. Sure, I knew all about the theory and how they work. I had the information, but the program never explained the process of actually using a cell phone. All right. Now, the professor gave us two examples that explained process explanation. The first example was about informative process explanation, and the second one was about actually um, oh no, the second one was about informative and the first one was direct process explanation, all right? But you don't really have to mention those two things. Now, the first example was about um, when, per when the professor bought a cell phone. He did mention that he's not technologically savvy, but you don't have to say that phrase. So the professor bought a cell phone and he had no clue how to use it. He wanted to save some numbers and did not know what to do. However, one of his friends kindly showed him exactly how to do it step by step. All right, so that's the first example. Now, the second example, we're going to say later that night, the professor watched a program about cell phone technology. So CP is cell phone, which imparted a lot of knowledge about cell phones. However, at the end of the show, he still did not know how to operate his cell phone simply because the program never explained the process of doing so. All right. Okay. Now that we know what I'm going to say in this sample response, let's go ahead and listen to my sample response. But actually, before we do that, let's count the number of sentences. One, two, three. One, two. Okay. So five sentences. That's it. Five. Lengthwise, I'll say six, maybe about six. All right. So let's listen to what I've got to say. In the lecture, the professor elaborated on a couple of different examples to explain the concept of process explanation. To begin with, the professor bought a cell phone and had no clue how to use it. He wanted to save some numbers on his phone and he didn't know what to do. However, one of his friends kindly showed him exactly how to do it step by step before he left. In addition to this, later that night, the professor watched a television program about cell phone technology, which imparted a lot of knowledge. On the other hand, at the end of the television show, the professor still did not know how to operate his cell phone, simply because the program never explained the process of doing so. To sum up, these were two perfect examples of process explanation, which is referred to as telling a person how to do some kind of action given by the professor in the lecture. All right, now, when I was done seeing the definition and uh, finished seeing given by the professor in the lecture, I noticed that I had about three seconds left. Now, when you only have about three, two, or maybe even sometimes four seconds left, don't say thank you for your time and consideration. 
Now, if you say thank you for your time and consideration for each and every task that you answer for the speaking section, it's going to be overkill. So for example, if you already said thank you for your time and consideration uh, for your task three response, and you notice that you only have about four seconds left when you're done saying the definition plus given by the professor in lecture for task four, don't say thank you for your time, time and consideration because it's going to sound very redundant and repetitive. All right, now let's move on to task six. All right, ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the dreaded task six question. Please look at the whiteboard and copy the note taking diagram that's in red marker. Now, here's the lecture. Listen to a lecture and take notes. Did everyone do their reading last night? Excellent. Then I'd like to quickly review a couple of the advertising techniques you read about. As you should recall, two techniques were primarily focused on. They were the direct and indirect methods of persuasion. I'd like to give a couple of examples of them now. All ads try to persuade people to purchase the products which they're promoting. The direct method is one popular way. When using this, advertisers note the features of their products that make them extraordinary and different from other similar products. They might cite various facts and statistics that will tell viewers exactly why they should go out and purchase that particular product. For example, a car manufacturer using direct advertising techniques might stress how safe the car is according to recent statistics. Or it might mention the car's gas mileage and note how it's much more economical than its competitors. On the other hand, there is also the indirect method of advertising. Here, advertisers attempt to persuade customers by using association. They might show the results of using or purchasing their product. For example, let's go back to car ads. Perhaps the car being sold is rather ordinary. Well, the manufacturer is going to show people smiling while they're driving. The mom and dad will be in the front listening to music while the kids in the back will be playing games or looking out the window to admire the scenery. That's an example of indirect advertising. The company's trying to make potential buyers think they'll be as happy as the people in the ad if they purchase that company's product. All right. Sometimes I wish I had a bigger whiteboard. Clearly, I ran out of space here, but I'm going to be able to remember what needs to follow after happy if, okay? All right, now, the beginning sentence so far, I only have the subject of the sentence written down, which is a couple of advertising techniques. Now, we're actually lucky because if a task six question has a topic, much like the task four question, you're always able to say how something exactly works or how some things exactly work, all right? Now, clearly, this is plural. So I'm gonna say exactly work over here to finish the beginning sentence and the ending sentences, all right? So if the task six lecture has a topic, much like the task four lecture, just add exactly work or exactly works after the topic. Now, the first section was about direct advertising techniques, and the second section was about indirect advertising techniques. So do you think Moreover, or on top of this would be more suitable or something like on the other hand. I think on the other hand would sound much better. So we're going to use on the other hand for this transition. All right. The first example says direct advertising techniques note the features of their products that make them extraordinary. Okay. Or make them different as well, but I'm, gonna, I'm not going to say that. For example, a car manufacturer using this advertising technique or direct advertising technique will mention facts such as gas mileage to do what? To sell their cars, all right? Now, the second example or the second part, indirect advertising techniques persuade consumers or customers by using association. For instance, if a car being sold is ordinary, the commercial will show people smiling in the car in order to make potential buyers think that they will be happy if they, what? Purchase the car, all right? Now, let's count the number of sentences. One, two, three, four. So four complete sentences, four independent clauses. But lengthwise, I'm gonna say it's about five, all right? Now, let's listen to my sample response. The professor gave a lecture about how a couple of advertising techniques exactly work. To begin with, Direct advertising techniques usually note the features of their products that make them extraordinary. For example, 
A car manufacturer using direct advertising techniques will most likely mention various facts such as the gas mileage in order to make viewers buy their cars. On the other hand, indirect advertising techniques normally persuade consumers by using association. For instance, if a car being sold is ordinary, the commercial will show people smiling in the car in order to make potential buyers think that they will be happy if they purchase the same car. In summation, this was how a couple of advertising techniques exactly work, which was illustrated by direct advertising techniques and indirect advertising techniques. All right, now, thanks to my steady speaking pace, I did not even have to say given by the professor in the lecture after, which was illustrated by blah, blah, blah. Now that's good because for the task four question, I had to say given by the professor in the lecture, but for this, I didn't have to. So the number of repeated, repetitive phrases will have decreased just by a little bit. All right, ladies and gentlemen, that just about wraps up today's video. I really hope you guys enjoyed the sample responses. If you did, please don't forget to smash the like button. Don't forget to subscribe if you're a first time viewer and please comment if you have any questions. I'll see you guys in the next video, which is going to be focusing on integrated and independent writing. I'm going to do both in the next video. So please, if those writing prompts are challenging to you, stay tuned and be sure to check out the next video. Peace. Have a wonderful day.